Hello, this is Dr. Ashley. We all have heard the story by now of Zora Sanders, the young lady who recently denounced her membership in Delta Sigma Theta less than 30 days after crossing into the Alpha Chapter. We've heard all of the arguments for and against, etc. My brain has mysteriously put together some strange thoughts in this aha moment from all of your stories that I'm hearing on the internet, particularly about sexual harassment and deviancy. So are you meaning to tell me, let me know if I'm correct, that many Deltas, Zetas, AKAs, SG roles do sexy bedroom dances in front of D9 fraternity members on the yard. These are the same men that could kidnap you on campus and force you to perform strange sexual acts. They could sexually harass you after you have gyrated your hips in a line dance in front of them the night before on the yard. And what do you get out of all of this? You walk away with your letters, possibly post-grad employment from your social connections as a result of your social connections, a sisterhood, but from what I've noticed from even my own experiences at uh, one of the particular universities that I've graduated from, there are a lot of romantic commitment issues There are a lot of women that have trouble committing to a spouse or closing that part of their body until this guy is serious. Is this a result of unresolved trauma stemming from the organization? You don't have to answer unless you want to. Another thing I feel led uh, to speak about. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. In those days, John the Baptist began preaching in in the Judean wilderness. His message was, turn from your sins and turn to God, because the kingdom of heaven is near. If... You're teetering on the edge and you feel like coming out. You're being prompted by the Holy Spirit. Like I was prompted by the Holy Spirit um, to give my life to him when I was nine years old. I felt like even as a nine years old that I was walking on air. Like I couldn't sit in my seat. I needed to respond to something and I needed to respond to it now. I couldn't sit down quietly in my seat at church. It was as if the Holy Spirit chose me and he said it's time and I was like a bride going to her groom. It's just like you're walking on air. I can't even I can't even describe it in the natural realm. It's like a ghost is pulling you out of your seat And you're getting up and walking. And you don't know. what You know why you're walking. And it feels completely natural to you. You don't feel spooky about it. And you're like. I need to give my life. You're metaphorically walking in your mind. You're like. I need to give my life to the Lord. You know. You just feel this gumption. And you can't shake it. Life Application Study Bible explains Matthew 3, 1 and 2 in this way. And I believe this is the message he has for for some of you who are considering 
denouncing. Almost 30 years had passed since the events of chapter 2. Um, remember, there's women on the internet um, upset with some of the older women who have been in the organization for decades and are just now renouncing, you know, basically indirectly saying to them, well, why don't you just die in the organization since you've been in it this long? And no, when God calls you out, he calls you out and you can't shake the feeling you have to go. Almost 30 years had passed since the events of chapter 2. Here, John the Baptist burst onto the scene. His theme was, turn from your sins. The people needed to repent, make a 180 degree turn from the kind of self-centeredness that leads to wrong actions such as lying, cheating, stealing, gossiping, taking revenge, abusing, and indulging in sexual immorality. A person who turns from sin stops rebelling and begins following God's way of living prescribed in his word. The first step in turning in to God is to admit your sin, as John urged. Then God will receive you and help you live the way he wants. Remember, only God can get rid of sin. He doesn't expect us to clean up our life before we come to him. Yeah. If you're like, well, I don't know how to do this. Just say, dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to show me how to walk this new path with you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's simple as that. And I be believe me. The next morning you're going to wake up feeling the same, but I guarantee you, God will start setting up people and places and things in your life. The whirlwind will begin. You might see a few days later, somebody's having a random conversation with you that you didn't know that you needed. All of a sudden, God is putting people and places and things in your path to help you out where he wasn't doing that before. Um, don't wait. 